how many different versions of a Curiscale actually tooled up to be able to produce? I think the safe answer is all of them. Hey there, so great to see you. I hope you are well. I'm Jenny Kirk, this is We're Yard, and today we're going to be taking a look at the latest release from a Curiscale, and they've very kindly sent three over for us to take a good close look at together here on the channel. This is a model which has actually been available ready to run from another manufacturer for decades and decades. And whilst it was a very popular model in its time, the thing about having a model that dates back to the 70s is that they do tend to get a bit long in the tooth. So modelers everywhere have been asking for an all new tooled version of the Siphon G, and it's a Curiscale who stepped up to the plate and delivered. Now, one of the things that's really struck me when looking at these three examples that they've loaned to the channel is just how many different detail versions they've actually tooled up for. This is not a generic one size fits all wagon. In fact, there are a number of different roofing options, end detail options, side panel detail, including doors, louves, vents, and such like. And also below the sole bar, there is a wealth of braking detail too. So much so that if you asked me how many different versions of a Curiscale actually tooled up to be able to produce, I think the safe answer is all of them. Available in a huge number of different liveries from their original as introduced GWR livery through that First World War ambulance train livery. We've got the interwar period covered and then on into early BR in that carmine red and on to their later life as newspaper vans in the iconic rail blue where they were much photographed towards the end of their lives. There's also a special Acura scale website only exclusive of an olive green M parts variety that was used to take spare parts between depots, but that's only available from Acura scale direct. If you like the look of any of the other liveries that you see in today's video, we do have an affiliate link in the description box down below that takes you to rails of Sheffield to be able to pick up one for yourself, but do hurry because I think they are going to be quite popular. But after so many different releases from Acura Scale that really have moved that bar higher and higher, is it time for them to stumble and drop the ball? Is the Siphon G going to be the model where it doesn't quite hit the mark? Or is this going to be another that knocks it out of the park well and truly? Come with me and let's find out in association with Trainomatic. Makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at clarkrailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. But I've been really excited to see these vans and it's really, really great to finally have three of them in the flesh to take a look at. And all three of these are subtly different and we will go into that as we go through the review. But if you do like today's review, then please, please, please tickle that like button and also consider sharing it to social media and subscribing to the channel if you've not already done so. But without further ado, let's see, is this the moment that Acura Scale deliver us another award sweeping belter or are they going to drop the ball? Let's find out. The Siphon G Bogey Milk and Parcels van has been a very highly requested item. Long lived in model form from another manufacturer, it was good in its day but has for a very long time now been showing its age. And with the call from modelers for a new tooled example to be made available ready to run, it is a Curiscale who have answered that call and delivered. 
Not just a one-size-fits-all variety, but actually a number of different, subtly different, tooled-up versions to be able to represent the Siphon G throughout its entire lifespan with different braking arrangements and also different door side grills and panels which make this one of the most comprehensive tooling suites for a single model. That means that modelers will be spoilt for choice and there are quite a few different versions that have been made available and Acuriscale have very kindly sent over three of these to the channel for us to take a good close look at. The model itself comes in these durable high quality boxes which really make a statement about the model within. They're really great for protecting it in transit but also for storing it on the shelves and it's a statement from a curious scale about how highly they view their models. The standard packaging also features these line drawings on the top and they're quite eye-catching enough to be able to be easy to spot in model shops and at swap meets alike. These two particular versions, we've got the Pattern M34 in rail blue and also Pattern 0.33 as well. And this, the Siphon G in military ambulance livery in its own incredibly eye-catching box, which really does stand out. Opening the box, the model is in a split blister pack. And we also have some additional detail parts as well. There's the regular array of uh, buffer beam pipework detail if you want to add these, although do bear in mind that this may well preclude the use of the couplings. But one of the extra features of this, and as far as I'm aware, one of the first instances of a manufacturer offering these ready to run, we have magnetic couplings, which mean that this model can be close coupled with something other than the usual tension locks and give much more reliable running. And we will put these to the test later on in this review. Looking to the van itself, what quickly becomes apparent is that there is a lot of detail on here. This particular eye-catching example has this khaki green finish, which is really nicely applied with its slightly satin verging on matte look being absolutely perfect. The Red Cross insignia are really sharply realized and even where there's planking detail, the white has provided good coverage and there's no bleed through of the colors underneath. Again, sharp on the 3207. And also on the roof, we've got the large insignia painted on there just as it would have been with the prototype. And this was to make sure that any aerial units could see from a distance that this was not a military train, but was actually a hospital one under the jurisdiction of the Red Cross. On the roof, we've got the uh, beading, which is very crisply molded, and a whole array of these ventilators in their zigzag pattern. At this end too we've got an additional roof panel and as you'll see from subsequent models as I show you them there are some subtle detail differences between the versions and show just how much effort Acuriscale has put in for tooling up to make sure that every single version of the Siphon G can be accurately reproduced. The ends of the van have these uh, corridor connections and these are quite flexible as well. I quite like the material that they've chosen to make these out of. In addition, we've got plenty of separately applied detail. And the buffers too, the correct pattern, made from turned brass, and sprung. It's a pleasing amount of spring, and such that if you choose to use three link couplings and operate these in a prototypical fashion, these sprung buffers will make that job really quite easy. We've also got the lamp iron there, quite flexible. I think that's molded from the same material as the corridor connection, but it's surprisingly durable and nice to see that they've got the white painted on there, even though it's quite an unusual material. Looking down the other side, again, we've got the correct representation of the louvred panels, the doors, and some of these are actually etched parts that have been separately applied. They really do give a good effect. The door hinges are molded on, separately applied parts made from, it feels like brass wire. 
Looking along the sole bar, we've got additional printing and a lot of very subtle riveting detail and some of the steps as well. We also like these lifting eyes, separately applied and finished in the white, making them really stand out. Separate fitted uh, steps. Again, quite robust. I think they're made from plastic, but it's certainly some great choice of materials to make sure that it also captures the detail, but as well is quite durable under handling. You can see there the correct pattern of rivets as we move further down the sole bar. And then looking further down, we've got the correct pattern bogies as well. Again, there's plenty of separately applied parts, including these footsteps and the axle box covers are correctly finished in this very, very pale sky blue, just like the prototype. Spring detail is really quite crisp and sharp and there's more of that rivet detail exactly where it needs to be. And the secondary suspension just here on the side. Wheels, a correct pattern, turned brass. And these spin really quite freely. Looking on the underside is where this model really gets going. There is a wealth of separately applied brake rigging and brake stretchers already applied on the bogies. There is a lot going on there. The bogies themselves held by this single screw in the centre and have a reasonable amount of lateral movement and some side to side to take in undulations on track. The coupling is a slimline tension lock in a NEM pocket. But as said before, these can be swapped out for the magnetic versions that do come in the box with them. On the underside, it's very apparent that we've got a lot of different options here. The small holes indicate that there are different detail options available, depending on which livery version we have. And I will show you the different versions available across the three Siphon Gs that Acura Scale have sent to the channel. We've got the push rods for all the braking and uh, I'm assuming that this part here is to do with the original braking system. We've then got battery boxes and the trusses underneath all correctly separately applied. There's an awful lot going on here and uh, we've got a dynamo too for providing power to the uh, van interior and all in all this is really quite an impressive van. We're moving right up to the dying days of the Siphon Gs in newspaper traffic. And this particular version comes in rail blue. And initially you can see looking down the side, we've got a lot of different detail on that side. As I said in the intro, Acura Scale have made every effort to tool up the different detail versions for the different diagrams of the Siphon G and modifications that took place throughout their life. No more so is the comparison between the very early as the military ambulance and the very late as the newspaper traffic. Again, we've got a lot of uh, separately applied parts and the braking assembly there. We've got different here. We've got a, a handbrake lever on the side, correctly finished and surprisingly robust. We've got additional pipe work, which is applied and uh, some really quite nice writing in that. I can't actually read that on the viewfinder of the camera, but I've got every faith that it will be perfectly legible up close. The newspapers legend and the BR double arrow is crisp and clear. We don't appear to have any bleed through again, which is good to see often. The white can be a difficult color to reproduce with the tampo printing unless multiple passes are taken to ensure that there is no bleed through. And certainly Acura Scale have paid very close attention on this. The end of the, the van is again full of different bits of detail. And we've got this lighter cream color for the connecting door inside the gangways and a whole host of different bits of printing from the overhead warning flashes down to additional information about the van. When we compare the ends on these two, you can see that the earlier diagram of the van has the footholds and the handrails, which would have allowed staff to climb up to the roof. 
On later diagram vehicles, these were done away with to avoid staff being able to get too close to overhead line equipment, and that is correctly tooled on this version. We also have different pattern of lamp irons, and additional detail too, just there on the side of the corridor connection. The attention to detail for some of these small differences really is quite pleasing to see. Looking again to the underside, you can see we've got a very different arrangement of detail parts for the dual vacuum brake cylinders, and it quickly becomes apparent just how much flexibility a Curiscale have for representing the different detail versions throughout the lifespan of these vans. The steps too, different on the sides, and we still got that really sharp, crisp detail on the underside. The extra footboards separately applied. It's got quite a, a mesh finish, although there is just a little bit of chipping of paint on those. I just see the etched brass coming through, although I think that these have been review samples, so they will most likely have done the rounds before they reached me. The roof too on this particular diagram is completely smooth. There's no holes or anything like that for the ventilators and it shows that Curiscale have taken the time to tool up for different roof profiles without any kind of compromise. Delivery application too nicely follows the contour of the lowermost rain strip and that's a really nice touch replicating delivery as applied on the prototypes. The final example that Acuriscale has sent to the channel is a different diagram again. So you can see here, we've got much more in the way of these body side grills down the side. Again, plenty of separately applied mesh detail, which is done with etched brass. The printing is crisp, legible, with no bleed through of the blue. And I do like the fact that where it doesn't need to be separately applied, things like the hinge detail is cleverly moulded in with only the handrails that need to see some kind of an air gap underneath being separately applied. I do like the fact that Curiscale have captured the slab sidedness of the prototype so so well, the crisp wooden planking and the metal plates riveted on along the tops. We've got correctly finished ends, this time with the uh, body blue in the corridor connections, same flexible material for these. And there's no risk of damage of that additional detail at the top. I think they're actually molded sympathetically in the same material and it works really, really well. Looking to the underside, we have a different layout yet again of the vacuum cylinders, this time side by side, as opposed to staggered on this version. When you compare all three of these, you can see three completely different configurations with more scope for yet more detail differences. And it really shows that Acuriscale have gone above and beyond. Looking to the roof of this final example, we've also got the ventilators making their appearance again in that zigzag pattern. But this too is different to the World War I version where you can see that this roof panel is not present on the more modern version. When it comes to running these on the layout, they performed incredibly well. I had them running on a whole host of unsympathetic track, including going through point work and gradient changes that really would have been far more severe than the prototypes would have ever been tasked with, and certainly with more undulations and twists than the average model layout. And that's one of the things that Weir Yard has purposefully been built with in order to put items of rolling stock and locomotives through the utmost of testing. They were smooth, with very little rolling resistance considering their size and weight, and they are reasonably weighty for what you get. I found them really reliable performers, and they managed even some of the most challenging areas of Weir Yard without derailing or any kind of coupling slippage. I'm turning now to the magnetic couplings, and I'm going to give these a go. And it's an interesting design, I'm quite curious to see just how well these work. And it seems that there's some ability for them to twist. So there's no riding up, they always engage positively. 
I quite like them. It's a totally different design to any of the magnetic couplings that I've seen before. I'm going to fit these between two of these fans, just pulling out the original tension lock and sliding in the magnetic versions. You'll feel a click and that is positively in place. I'm going to fit the other one onto the duplicate. And again, positive location. With them uh, just put together like that, they do give the vans quite a good deal of rotation. But one thing I notice is that they do seem to be much easier to pull apart than other brands of magnetic couplings that I've used here on Weir Yard. I'm going to just put them to the test here on the slope on Weir Yard and see just how much force it takes to part the train. Looking at the factory fitted tension lock couplings, we get a slightly large gap, but that's not uncommon with ready to run 00 because it's necessary for them to go around the corners and not induce buffer lock or issues with the couplings themselves. Where these vans have been fitted with the supplied magnetic couplings, the gap is a lot closer and those sprung buffers will come into their own when used in this way. But are they up to the job of keeping the train together? What I've done is I've secured a locomotive at either end of this train and I'm going to try and have them play tug of war and pull the train apart. When I've used magnetic couplings in the past from other manufacturers, this has been one area where the locomotive will stall and just spin its wheels rather than pull the magnets apart. On this, it seems that it is quite easy for the train to pull itself apart purely with the power of the locomotive. I'm just gonna do it one more time at a very slow speed. And I have to say that these are not as strong as any of the other brands of magnetic couplings that I've tried. And if I try and pull them apart by hand, it is quite easy to do so. It's nice that Acura Scale have done something different but I'm not convinced that the power of the magnets used is quite enough for the task that's being asked of them. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality, and I'm very, very impressed, not just with the durability of these models in extensive handling, with only one buffer coming loose with all of the handling that these have had, and it must be remembered that these are the review samples, so they've already been through the hands of all the magazines and been extensively handled and entrusted to multiple trips through the post. There really wasn't anything to fault, and I was particularly impressed with the robustness of some of the really quite thin and spindly detailing, including the brake rigging underneath and the footboards on the bogies. I also really like the great choice of materials such as the spring that can be had out of the corridor connections without any sign of what is actually some quite spindly detail running any risk of breaking. The etched parts as well are well fitted in. There's no sign that they run the risk of pushing back through and into the van. And even separate parts such as the ventilators on the roof feel very, very secure, with none showing any signs of drifting loose. All in all, it's a great performance, with only that loose buffer to take any points off, so I'm going to give it a 9.9. .9. On running quality, these vans again performed faultlessly. They got round some very tight corners without any kind of issues, and through the undulations that Weir Yard can offer. They got through point work too without any issues at all and all in all there's just nothing that I could fault with them. The only area where things maybe just got a little bit uh, below par was the magnetic couplings very very easily pulling apart 
but as these are an optional extra and not the couplings that the models ship attached with, I don't think that this is a great issue and Acura Scale should be congratulated for offering these as an extra within the price of the van. So I'm still going to give this a 10 out of 10. When it comes to DCC fitting and innovation, I was particularly impressed. The clever use of slides in the tooling has allowed pretty much every detail option that these vans carried throughout their long lives to be modelled accurately. And in particular, the wealth of underframe detail can be accurately portrayed using this very comprehensive tooling suite. I also like the fact that pretty much all of the detail is applied for the end user at the factory, giving the feel of a product that you can just take out the box, put on the rails and go, without trying to work out where to put a bag full of fiddly components. The only user fitted parts are honestly those which can't come from the factory because the couplings would get in the way. But it's nice to see that they are provided so that those users who either want to put these on display or have another means of coupling the vans together can make full use of them. And it's really great to see. I was really quite impressed with the wealth of different detail options even just between these three versions and with around 16 different versions available from Acura Scale, I've got every faith that pretty much you name the configuration they can accurately produce it. So I'm going to give it a 9.9 .9 with again the only area where I felt the innovation fell down a little bit was the magnetic couplings. It's nice on one hand that Acura Scale have provided them, but it felt that those magnets are just too weak to be usable. They do look good close coupled with those magnetic couplings, but it just felt that they weren't powerful enough to keep the vans together in a train, and it was far too easy to pull them apart. So I'm going to give them a 9.9. .9. The final score on value for money. Well, these can be had for around £55 or just a smattering under from some of the retailers that I've been looking up what they are available for. And we've got a link in the description box taking you to Rails of Sheffield, where currently the full range is available to buy. In addition, they can be bought from Acura Scale, but this will be at the full RRP. But that does include the special Acura Scale exclusive of the end parts in olive green, which is certainly a very eye-catching livery option. It might be considered by some to be quite an expensive item of rolling stock, but you do get a lot for your money. This has a wealth of separately applied detail. And in addition, we've got so many different detail options which will all require their own parts of the tooling that certainly Acura Scale have spent a lot of money to ensure that this is the definitive Siphon G. I can't see any need for this model to ever be replaced. It's quite frankly as near as perfect as you can get it in 00. And that gives us a final score of 48.7, which is a really respectable score. And certainly these are incredible models and another incredible offering from Acura Scale, who do seem to be going from strength to strength. I can wholeheartedly recommend these models, and like all the rest of Acura Scale's range, I think that these are going to sell out really, really quickly. So there's no point in umming and ahhing. If you want one of these Siphon Gs for your layout, you need to get your skates on, because when they're gone, they will be gone, and they will do that remarkably quickly. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative and I'd really love to hear from you in the comment section down below if these are models that you have bought for your layout. What do you think about them? What have been your experiences of those close coupling magnetic couplings which have been included in the box? Now Acura Scale started this trend with their children hoppers and it's really nice to see that they are still developing this. Now magnetic couplings 
do seem to become the real thing which might dethrone the tension lock couplings and certainly we get a lot closer coupling between these fans using them but what have been your experiences with them? Also I'd love to know what have been your favourite liveries and are there any versions which haven't been released in this first uh, tranche of deliveries that you really want to see? Do leave a comment down below and don't forget that if you really like the look of the wagons featured today we have an affiliate link going to Rails of Sheffield down below where you can pick up your own version there and do hurry like all things Acura scale they do promise to sell out fairly fairly quickly. You can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. Then we've got different tiers of rewards to suit everybody's pocket so do check it out today and you can also become a channel member as well for a whole host of other unique benefits. There's a full merch store going on too but you know the drill. Until next time you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.